Okay, let's get started. Welcome everybody. My name is Gordon Farrelly. I'm the Traffic and Transport Team Leader here at Willoughby Council. I'm facilitating tonight and I most welcome everyone that's uh, come to join us to learn a bit more about the Pacific Highway Shared Path Draft Detailed Design Project that Council has been working on. Uh, we're hoping to uh, share information with you and have an interactive session so that we can um, allow you to learn a bit more about this project. Before we get started, I'll just uh, undertake our welcome to country. So on behalf of Willoughby City Council, I wish to acknowledge the traditional inhabitants of the land on which we stand, the Aboriginal people, their spirits and ancestors. We acknowledge the vital contribution that Indigenous people make to the nation that we share Australia. So thank you for that. Um, I'd also now like to thank uh, the attendance of Mayor Giles Kidney and our uh, Councillor Norton for attending the webinar. It's much appreciated. And I might uh, pass it across to Mayor Giles Kidney just to introduce the webinar. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Gordon. Um, and this is a very exciting moment because I get lots of feedback from the community particularly in this post-COVID environment where cycle paths really came into their own. And we're getting a lot of feedback from the community that they really wanna make sure that we've got excellent connectivity. Um, council has been thinking about this for quite a while and extensive community consultation on a proposed share path uh, for Pacific Highway linking Mobay Road, Chatswood and Herbert Street St Leonard's was taken back in April and May, 2019. And the community feedback informed the final concept design um, and plans were endorsed by council in late 2019. And the draft detailed design plans on the approved concept uh, and providing more information on the changes along the route as well. And this is, uh, webinar is a really important and beneficial way to share and explain the program the project and also provide um, a draft of the detailed design. Um, but more importantly, while we'll be having a look at the design, this is an opportunity for the community to interact, uh, to ask questions and provide feedback. And that feedback will assist us in making sure that we're um, getting as much uh, community feedback incorporated into that design that will be finalised shortly. So really excited to be here today and can't wait to hear what we've got in store and thank you um, Gordon to you and all the team for the hard work that you've put in into creating this and making it a reality. Thanks a lot Mark, Mayor Giles Gidney, fully support uh, what you've just said. Uh, we've got a few slides that we're going to uh, present this evening and uh, then we'll have a great opportunity for uh, people to ask questions and we'll try and answer all of those questions. I'll just get our presentation up. Okay, and now I'd just like to emphasize uh, that the information that we're talking uh, on this evening is actually already available on Council's website through its Have Your Say uh, website. And uh, we have uh, produced a number of materials uh, some of which we'll be uh, providing today, but I'll just emphasize and show a couple. If you can see this, there's a brochure, simple brochure for those that are non-technical people uh, that we've created that tries to explain the project in a very uh, high level, but sufficient information to you for those that can under, will then be able to understand the project and provide feedback. Uh, then there is also uh, a more detailed uh, I would call this a uh, more community focused or simplified strip map, which I'll be showing during today's webinar. Uh, then there is, for those more technical people, there's actually detailed technical uh, engineering drawings available as well uh, on the Have Your Say website. Then also just to help people understand how to communicate with us, uh, on the bottom of your screen, you should have a series of buttons. One of them says Q and A. That's actually the one that you press when you have a question and you can press that, type in the question and it'll come to us. And I can see that there's already one there now. So fantastic, just please keep using that. Okay, so the agenda for this evening, we've got a series of uh, items that we want to address. So uh, introduction and acknowledgements. So I'll now just uh, uh, 
give just a brief outline of the project. So this Pacific Highway Share Path, uh, its aim is to connect residents and visitors to retail service, cultural and recreational uses and transport modes in the Chatswood CBD, in the Lane Cove area, R. Tarman Local Centre and St Leonard's. And it will become a really important link in our bicycle network, which I'll explain shortly. Now the presentation or, or the, the webinar is an hour. We hope to address the presentation part of it in less than 30 minutes, and then for around 30 minutes have Q and A. So please, you can ask us questions at any time during this presentation. Just in terms of uh, who's involved, so this is myself as the Traffic and Transport Team Leader. This evening, we've got the Project Manager uh, with us, and we've also got our Stakeholder Engagement Specialist. And from our Design Experts, uh, Group GSA, we've got uh, Tim Field, Liam Iskerson, and Stephen Hammond. And I'll actually be passing across to uh, that team during the presentation to provi provide more insight into the design approach and what's being proposed as part of the draft detail design. As part of the um, acknowledgement, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, funding from the New South Wales Government Department of Planning, Industry and Environment. And we've been able to get funds through its Active Transport Links program to undertake the detailed design. So thank you for that Government Department for helping us deliver this project. So the aim really, as I said, is to try and uh, give you a context of where we're at at the present time. And, uh, uh, and then we sort of take that forward into where we are now, share the information on the draft detailed design, answer as many questions as we can from webinar participants, and then uh, provide more information about how you might be able to get more information. And then just as importantly, provide feedback, because that's what we're on about. We want to get your feedback to give greater um, insight into how we should take the detailed design forward. So just again, context uh, wise, um, it, this project actually fits into the bike plan that the council has adopted. It forms part of a, a sub link, a sub network of links within the Artam and, and St Leonard's area. And this diagram on the left essentially is trying to provide that sense that the, the project, which is the red line on the sort of left-hand side of the uh, diagram, is uh, a connect north-south connector between St Leonard's and Chatswood. Uh, and it supports the existing east-west movements that are uh, sort of evenly distributed from north to south uh, through the area. And then there is a, a new project, which is in purple there, that was currently under construction, again, funded by the Department of Planning, Industry and Environment, which will create a new high standard shared path link, linking Campbell Street from the Pacific Highway eventually through to Herbert Street. And then the, another project that uh, we're currently uh, in the process of consulting is the green one and we'll have a webinar on Thursday night, which I'll provide more information on. So this is not just a standalone link. This actually is part of a network. And we hope that the broader community and our local residents will use this as well as all the other safe links to move around uh, the Artarman industrial area and further beyond. Uh, Mayor Giles Gidney mentioned the uh, gestation of this project. We've done a concept design, we've taken to that community and uh, thank you for those that provided feedback. We incorporated that into the concept design, got it approved by council and then progressed this project. So it's been uh, a series of steps to get to where we are now. Now just concentrating on the project that we're talking about tonight, that's the uh, shared path on the eastern or and northern side of the Pacific Highway, linking from Mowbray Road in Chatsworth to Herbert Street and St Leonard's. That project actually uh, was developed based on a number of, uh, I suppose you'd call them principles or approach that council's keen to introduce within its bicycle network. And I'll just, if you uh, just give me a minute or so, I'll just run through uh, those. We see safety as our highest priority. And we see that for all road users. So when we're designing 
the uh, shared path, we're thinking not only of cyclists, we're thinking of the pedestrians that use uh, the current footpath. We're thinking about drivers that drive into and out of the local roads and the other roads, and also those at the driveways. Uh, we see pro the highest priority for pedestrians. We want them to feel comfortable with this new shared path facility. We're actually trying to design it so that anyone that's wanting to ride a bicycle that might be in, and I use the term, 8 to 80 range, uh, is feeling comfortable and safe and confident to use this new facility. We want to integrate it uh, acceptably into the existing road and pathway network. It's always challenging when we've got an established footpath and we want to introduce this facility. So um, that, that is what we're trying to achieve with Group GSA's assistance. So we wanna provide a design that maximizes user as well as the broader community benefits. So when I talk about that, not only just about belt bicycles, but those that actually um, feel as though they want a more pleasant environment to be in, we tried to develop a design that achieves that as well. And, and lastly, and just as importantly, we want something that's fit for purpose design that is functional. So what I'd like to now do is uh, pass across to Liam um, from Group GSA and just ask him to provide some information on the more de design specific elements of the project. Uh, thank you, Gordon, for uh, giving that introduction. Um, as uh, you said, my name is Liam, part of the design team with Group GSA. I also have uh, Tim and Sam here. Um, and we're going to talk through a bit more of the detailed design of this share path on the Pacific Highway. Uh, Gordon, if you'd like to jump to the next slide, please. This was this uh, quite clearly shows the design intent with what we are uh, hoping to achieve along the Pacific Highway. Uh, there are two types that we'll be uh, dealing with in terms of how this path is going to be achieved. On the left-hand side, you can see that we are widening the existing footpath to accommodate a three-metre wide um, cycleway and pedestrian pathway. Um, and this also includes a uh, planted or sometimes turf verge on the roadside. And now this helps create further safety, giving a barrier between uh, pedestrians and cyclists and the vehicles, um, and then also helps increase the environmental and planting aesthetics of the road. Um, and in some areas, we will be looking to uh, introduce trees uh, where possible as well on the route. There are some instances along the Pacific Highway where we are constrained. Unfortunately, it does narrow in some areas um, below three metres. And as you can see on the right-hand side is an example of where in this situation where we would need to extend the concrete footpath all the way to the uh, curb and to the road edge. And this is to uh, maintain enough room for both cyclists and pedestrian use along the share path. Um, this would be around 2.6 metres, so it's still uh, accommodates that use, um, but we do have to kind of negotiate a lot of the um, services that are on the, on the site currently, including poles, light poles, service bollards, uh, signposts, many of which will be relocated uh, into the uh, edges of the uh, planted verges or off the main um, thoroughfare where appropriate. Um, and just to try and really make that clear um, path and access for all users. Um, if you'd like to flip to the next slide, Gordon, uh, this is an example of some of the uh, line marking and signage that we'll be using along the route to uh, increase the safety and usability for everyone. Um, as a typical example, the bottom photo shows the standard um, signage and line marking that you'd be familiar with, separating uh, uh, the direction of uh, each of the riders and pedestrians to the left-hand side of the path of travel. Um, in specific instances, uh, we are going to be using some more custom shared path line marking, which you can see in the top photos. These are quite typical and are used around various parts of the city. Um, and in Sydney, they've uh, been rolled out in many different projects to great success. Um, and they, they all quite vary in, their, in how they're customised, but it allows additional awareness and can warn people about upcoming uh, potential uh, intersections or transition points or poles and, and whatnot. Um, and additionally as well, there'll be an overlay of wayfinding to help people uh, move through, the, um, through this route and connect to other parts of the 
of the of the area. Um, if you'd like to go on to the next slide, Gordon, this is getting into a bit more of um, the detail where we actually hit intersections. Uh, there are five intersections along the route of this of this of this path of travel. Uh, there is Remington Street, Alto Place, Whiting Street, Dixon Avenue, and Carlota Street. On the right hand side, we have two examples um, of the treatment that we'll be using, uh, where we'll be actually pulling out the curb further. And this uh, helps reduce the crossing distance for the users and uh, and then enables people to have a shorter crossing distance. And also the build out of these curbs allows vehicles to slow down as it is a, is a change of condition and then therefore um, help slow and calm the area around that space. Uh, it is worth noting that we are anticipating a loss of one car park space to both Alto Place and Whiting Street, uh, but we are doing our best to uh, try and reduce this and possibly um, keep the minimum park into a loss. Uh, if you'd like to go to the next slide, please, Gordon. Uh, this is the other uh, instance of where we need the detailed treatment, which is with the bus stop designs. There are 11 bus stops uh, along this route, which will be upgraded and will improve this um, pedestrian and cyclist movement while also accommodating for those using, um, using the bus network. The top photo shows an example of bus stops that are located at the end of cul-de-sacs, uh, which happens in two locations, which is Palmer Street and Eric Road. There is uh, some areas here where we'll be, we will have to remove some trees to accommodate the bus stops. But as a whole across the project, we are looking to plant, replace these trees that we're removing and then also plant additional trees along the route to help increase the canopy um, along the Pacific Highway. Uh, the second image shows an example where we run the share path behind the bus stop. Uh, this is the main preference along the whole route where it really helps separate the users of the bus stops from the people moving through the space um, with adequate width. We can um, we will be shifting some of the bus stops close to the curb to allow this access to happen. We do have a couple of pinch points with bus stops where we will have to locate the bus to the back. And this is on the uh, last image and where people will be moving um, in front of the bus stop in this instance. But where this happens, we'll be really um, stressing the importance of wayfinding line marking and signage on the surfaces to help kind of increase the awareness of people moving through here so they slow down um, as they move through this space to reduce conflict. Uh, and I believe that is it from our discussion, Gordon, if I pass back to you. Great, thanks, Liam, I appreciate that. Just to clarify for those that uh, can't quite understand this diagram, that blue line there that's in the, the top and the middle diagram, they're actually an uh, indication of where the shared path would run. So as Liam says, it's uh, intended to run them behind the shelter uh, where we can, and that's a safest arrangement for cyclists, pedestrians and bus users. So just to clarify that. And just to reaffirm that um, we are looking to try and improve the you know, public domain through more trees and uh, landscaping where possible and introducing measures that are more... Um, uh, not only aesthetic, but environmentally uh, focused. The other thing that uh, we, we will be doing, which we, we won't go into the micro detail here, but we are looking to try and introduce other bicycle user improvements like uh, wayfinding signs and some potential sort of uh, water come air sort of spaces at, or facilities at key locations as part of the project. Okay, so we're now really uh, past the, the pro formal information uh, provision part of the project. I actually will pre present um, or provide on the screen the strip maps for us to go through as questions run through. Um, so please send through the questions. Um, it appears at this stage, uh, we've only got one. So if you have a question, there's a great opportunity for you to uh, ask us now, and we're more than willing to answer that. Um, and uh, if there is, is by way of more questions which we can't answer, then uh, we'll answer them after the webinar and the information will be provided on the Have Your, Waste, Have Your Say website for this project. So please uh, send them through while I just get the other uh, presentation up.
Oh, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Yep, my apologies. Yep, and then it's that one. Yeah, thanks. And uh, edit, expand. Is that that one? Beautiful. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so, look, here is uh, the other tool that I mentioned before about um, the information we're presenting, and. Um, just to briefly outline it, it's um, a bit, bit more of a simpler version. You'll see that a lot of the diagrams are very similar to what's already been shown. So we have um, uh, a, a question from uh, Carolyn New. So thank you for that, Carolyn. Uh, and I'll just run through it. It's great to see the adjustments to some of the bus shelters along the route. There is other street furniture, such as street signage and parking meters which are sometimes scattered on the green verge will there be adjustments to avoid this clutter liam did you want to just uh answer that question please uh yeah so we we are aware that there are a few uh of those items along the route and we are going to be looking to uh relocate um them within the um verge where possible we are restricted i know with some parking meters there's certain offsets that are required but typically we're going to be moving um, posts and service bollards to the edges um, of, of, the, of the share path. Um, and along it's probably worth noting as well, there are a few instances where there's some signs where they're quite low and a bit of a head height issue. And we're also looking to um, uh, extend them higher, especially for cyclists, because the headroom, you require more headroom so you're not knocking your head. And we're also going to look to cantilever somewhere possible to um, remove the amount of posts and poles along the route. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Liam. That's good. Uh, Councillor Norton has asked a question. As the path is shared with pedestrians, has there been thought about appropriate speeds? Uh, there is no legislation that applies to shared paths, uh, so we can't actually apply a, um, a, a legal enforceable speed. However, uh, we are able to put in uh, signs and or I think more so markings to emphasise uh, the cyclist should uh, ride slowly uh, or ride through an area uh, slow uh, and they, they would be provided uh, on the pavement and there might even be additional signs. Did you want to include anything further with that, Liam? Uh, no, I think you've got that all there, Gordon. But yeah, especially with the line marking um, and that kind of warning signage will really help in the key points where it is kind of more of a tighter area. We would encourage people to slow down. Mm. Yes, thanks. Um, Carolyn New has asked another question. There are some large driveways along this route. What measures will be taken to ensure the safety of pedestrians and bike riders from large trucks? Liam, did you want to give an insight uh, into the design of driveways? Uh, yeah, so with the driveways, we will be, um, again, adding additional line marking as a uh, warning system there, which both acts for the people approaching the driveways, but also for the users of the driveways who are coming out. Uh, there are also a few redundant driveways along the Pacific Highway route from route from um, uh, buildings that are no longer in use. So we actually are looking to uh, repave them and uh, just turn them back into a, a path um, uh, where possible as well. Mm, yeah, so um, I think in simple uh, terms, there will be markings uh, across a driveway, um, which essentially indicate to drivers uh, going in and out that there will be cyclists and pedestrians walking across it. Uh, and on the approach to the driveway, there might be markings for the shared path users to be aware that there is a driveway there and there might be some vehicles crossing. So we'll incorporate that uh, within the detailed design. I've got another question here. Will the expanded sidewalk mean there is a bottleneck for the vehicles wanting to egress to the Pacific Highway? So the designs, as Liam alluded to, uh, is shown uh, in the diagram that I've got on the screen, shows it's sort of an example of an intersection. So um, typically what happens now is that uh, only one lane can enter. So uh, there shouldn't be any sort of major delays there from the highway. Um, they should be, drivers should be giving way to pedestrians uh, now anyway. If not that, then they should be 
slowing down and, and looking out for them. Coming out in the main, most of these intersections really only have one lane that comes out, mainly because uh, they can only turn left into the Pacific Highway in the intersections which don't have signals. Where there are signals, uh, there will be uh, a bicycle lantern introduced, which allows a cyclist to ride across the intersection. But the number of lanes and how the traffic signals work doesn't change. So I don't expect there to be any change where there are traffic signals. Moving on then, uh, Mr. Kellerman has uh, sent a uh, question. Hopefully speed can be managed with signs and without, without the need for bollards and chicanes to reduce safety for cyclists. Um, Liam, do you want to just uh, give an insight? I think you've already indicated that uh, mainly it'll be markings and uh, signs. We're not introducing chicanes or anything like that on the shared path. Yeah, that's uh, correct. At this stage um, we are, of the design, we haven't had the need to introduce them yet. Um, there is always a possibility that they might come in in very specific circumstances, but um, at this stage, yeah, we we tend to uh, tend to like to avoid that as well where possible. Mm, yeah, we like any uh, road user cyclists are wanting to have a uh, a, a, a a road in a pathway designed free of um, sort of hazards like poles and things like that. So our design is trying to minimise that. Uh, as best we can, noting that some of the structures are very large. They're there for, um, you know, intersections, very large green signs. There are existing uh, utility poles that are part of a system which we can't really adjust. Uh, and there are other sort of bigger boxes. So we are, we're trying our best to minimise the number of hazards. We're not intending to introduce any ha um, sort of hazards ourselves as such, but we have to manage the design to minimise that. Got a question from uh, Mary Ann. Uh, could you go through the bus stops for scenario again? Not clear. So uh, maybe I'll just jump to an example of a um, a bus uh, stop. So maybe on this one here. Uh, so this one relates to. Correct me if I'm wrong. This was opposite Al it says here opposite Allison Avenue that's an example of um, I think the third exam third diagram that was provided uh, and so Allison Avenue is there on our screen um, hopefully you can see my little cursor moving around there so that's the bus stop over there just here and uh, what it's showing and Liam jump in if I'm uh, saying this incorrectly is that there is an existing bus shelter there that uh, unfortunately the footpath width which is the curb to the property boundary is shown in grey and we're just having to uh, provide the shared path in that very tight environment and on balance once you uh, assess whether you move the bus shelter forward or back um, it has to stay where it is from a bus shelter design standard perspective. And then we have to manage the shared path in that context. Is that a fair explanation? Yeah, I think that's uh, correct, Gordon. And I think it's where, I guess, in the alternate option, which is the one seen above, where we, where we do have enough width in the footpath, we're able to move the bus shelter and move it closer towards the road. Uh, you can kind of see in there it's dashed in red the existing location and then the blue is then showing the new access that will be provided behind so the path will run continuously um, through mm, that's right I, the um the bus sorry the shared path in the case of the bottom diagram would run in the in the front or between the pacific highway and the shelter itself and so that, that's an example where we were saying it's a pinch point and we'd elevate the um, location with more signs and markings to emphasize safety, slow down um, for cyclists, be aware that there are pedestrians and bus users there. So we are certainly aware of the issues in those locations and we'll design uh, as best we can a safe design. 
Okay, let's uh, keep going. Marion, if that doesn't answer your question, please let us know. Uh, Mr. Kellerman has uh, asked another question. Are there any residential properties along the highway route where wheelie bins will need to be left out for collection? And if so, can there be provisions so they don't have to be left on the path itself, as happens with Epping Road Cycleway? Very good question, Mr. Kellerman. Look, um, again, this is the challenge of integrating a shared path within an established urban area, which is our Willoughby uh, area. Um, we have to acknowledge that other things uh, happen uh, but with, with the adjacent land uses, one of which is garbage collection. Um, and we will work with our waste area to try and minimise the impact uh, on waste collection, but also on the cyclists and pedestrians using the route. Um, the sorts of initiatives that we've already spoken to them about is sort of information, just letting them know it's a shared path to encourage the, um, the resident or the business to take its bin uh, out uh, as later as possible and bring it in as early as possible. Um, um, but we have to acknowledge that uh, bins uh, may will continue to be stored on the, the Pacific Highway shared path for some period of time because it's an essential service that currently exists. As developments occur and there's the potential to actually have garbage, garbage collection occur on the site, uh, we'll encourage that to, again, maintain the safety and integrity of the shared path. Um, Carolyn Yu has asked a question again. Thanks, Carolyn. There is very limited space around the Gore Hill Freeway entrance exit. Is there an opportunity to obtain more space for a sh safe shared path? Um, Liam, did um, the team there investigate whether there's opportunities to do any uh, widening to assist the shared path? Yeah, we are currently investigating that area and just with, in terms of land management, um, especially around on, on, the, uh, on the corners, there's quite a lot of overgrown planting um, that, is, that has just kind of just been um, kind of taken over a little bit. So we are kind of looking to see if, if we can maybe remove some of the lower, smaller shrubs to kind of widen out those corners. Uh, but it is still a bit of a difficult one in terms of who, who owns the land there and how much space we can take up. Yeah, thanks, Liam. Look, I can only support what Liam says. Uh, we are generally working within what we can control, which is the from the curb to the existing property boundary, where land um, may be owned by another state government agency like Transport for New South Wales, and we see that there be there is benefits for the shared path, then we will actively engage with them to see whether we can use some of their land uh, as part of our project. Um, but we have no guarantee that they would support that. Um, so. Charles Gowing has asked a question. I'll just read this out. Uh, Semi-trailer type trucks used for delivery uh, use in Alto Place and large vehicles like cement trucks and bendy buses, normal buses use Dixon, Ave Dixon Street and Carlotta Street. Will the road narrowing at these intersections with the Pacific Highway allow these vehicles to swing out onto the Pacific Highway without impacting traffic flow on the highway? For example, will these large vehicles now need two lanes to exit onto Pacific Highway to swing instead of the current one in most instances? So, um, Charles, the heavy vehicle movement uh, or the need to accommodate heavy vehicle movement into uh, in the design has been a consideration from the start. Um, and uh, through the industrial area, we acknowledge it's really important. So we've tried to design uh, the intersections to accommodate um, heavy vehicles. Um, in the main, we've looked at the types of land uses and determined that uh, a reasonable design would be for a medium or a heavy rigid vehicle, less so a semi-trailer, because they don't uh, typically use the industrial area, but they can still enter the, the local roads and come out and they can legally turn into um, lanes other than the curb lane if they need to. So we don't really see a, a strong in, uh, issue with heavy vehicle movement uh, at this stage. 
Uh, Liam, did you want to add anything further? Uh, yeah, I'll just add as well that we are um, testing sweat paths with these alignments of the curbs that we're pushing out and we are kind of still in stage of manipulating them slightly, but at, currently we are accommodating the heavy rigid um, within that turn. So it's, it's quite a finicky task with the exact alignment, but we're still at this stage managing to push out the curb to shorten that distance, but accommodate that turn. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, will the shared path continue from the Pacific Highway along Mowbray Road to the connection to Frank Shannon Walk? Or is that part of Metro project? Uh, so uh, I think if, if I can, it, I think it's uh, the question is referring to this area, the northern side of Mowbray Road from Pacific Highway through to Hamden Street uh, and then towards the railway corridor. Uh, hopefully you can see that there's a little um, um, tag there that says Chatswood Metro Dive Site. Council's understanding is that as part of the project, the Chatswood Dives, uh, the sorry, Met Sydney Metro City and Southwest project, that they will provide a shared path along the northern side of Mowbray Road from the Pacific Highway through to a new link that will uh, connect from essentially in the vicinity of Hampton Road through to Frank Shannon Walk at Nelson Street. Um, so uh, yes, that'll be done through that Sydney Metro project and uh, that'll form uh, another connection in our bicycle network. It, and then we'll talk on, about that on Thursday evening with the Hampton Herbert uh, detailed design project. All right, any other questions? While I wait for other questions, I might just help everybody uh, by um, going through the design plan. So just to try and help people understand these a bit better. Um, and Liam, please jump in uh, to help me if I, uh, I'm not interpreting it correctly, but you can see that the blue line uh, along the edge of the road, that's the indication of where the shared path uh, detailed design or shared path would be in the detailed design covers. And we've incorporated things like trees and the red uh, circle there means it's the existing bus stop. And the green is an indication of where the new bus shelter more so than bus stop will be because the bus stop is still in this sort of cul-de-sac area. That's Palmer Street there. It's not shown on here, but that is Palmer Street. And the, trying to help you understand what the design would look like, here's the Palmer Street uh, bus, new bus uh, stop and shelter. So you'll see that there are, uh, in this case, predicted to be three trees to be removed to provide this continuous uh, shared path away from the bus uh, passengers that are waiting, waiting at the bus stop. So we're sort of showing how the new bus stop would work with the shared path in operation. Now, as Liam said earlier, the three trees would be replaced by nine because the, uh, we would comply with the council's policy at least. And for every tree loss, we'd, we'd provide uh, three new ones. Okay, it looks like we do have another question. So I'll just uh, ask that. Will the expanded sidewalk mean there is a bottleneck for the, oh, did we not cover that? I think we've covered that, so, so uh, I think I've answered that. Sorry about that. Um, so keeping on going in terms of the design, just to help people understand uh, by the little section of the highway, what the shared path would look like. Uh, the team has provided this uh, graphical uh, sort of artist impression. So if you remember the uh, presentation, we, in this case, we've had have a shared path with uh, a verge here, separating the users uh, from motor cars to try and create that separation in a more pleasant environment. And for those that are technically minded, there is the, the diagram here that shows the width of the shared path, the verge width and the uh, travel lanes. So that, we'll just keep going then, going down south. Um, so in, the plans just link to each other. So this is heading south along the highway. You'll see here at Epping Road, sorry, Epic Road, uh, that there is a, a cul-de-sac and down here, again, the proposal is to just relocate the cross, the current bus shelter 
further into where the cul-de-sac is to create that separate um, shared path that goes around the back. Again, there's trees predicted to be removed to facilitate this, and they would be repeated uh, threefold along the route. Then we've got things like uh, existing uh, utilities and things like that, that are shown that we will need to adjust as we go forward. And so someone mentioned before about other infrastructure like signs. And so you'll see on the plan that they've been identified and we're looking to change them to improve the safety amenity for cyclists. Here's the uh, Remington uh, little uh, non-signalized or doesn't have traffic signals intersection. You'll see that it's simplistically shown there. You'll see that the cyclists and pedestrians cross and down here, you've got the facility. And for those that uh, live in the Altarman area, Remington Street actually is a route that heads east west and joins through to our time and local center. So you'll see that from this area here, you'll now be able to come to and from the time and local center to the highway to either head north or south. This now starts to introduce a, um, an indication of what happens at traffic signals. So the dotted line means that um, that's the path, indicative path of pedestrians and cyclists. And what we're saying is that within the signals, that there would be um, a lantern that would indicate bicyclists can ride across the intersection. Currently they can't because um, you can't ride across an intersection if you don't have a bicycle lantern. So uh, we know people do that, but what, what we're doing is enabling an ongoing continuous route through there. Again, there's a diagram of the nature of the, um, the shared path in that location indicatively um, shown as part of the diagram. As, as we continue south to the Gore Hill Freeway, uh, you've got another bus shelter here. Uh, in this case, this starts to demonstrate that we have got a number of different uh, bus stop environments that we're trying to uh, design around. And in this case, we've got an opportunity to relocate the shelter and provide the shared path around the rear, which is our best practice approach. Unfortunately, in other cases, it's not possible. And so we've got uh, a bus shelter sort of further down here, this is the Allison one that's also shown on this plan. So uh, we'll still provide a continuous shared path, but we'll manage the different sort of pinch points as best we can. Now this is uh, Gore Hill Freeway is a really good point to ho highlight. This is an interchange point to then access the Gore Hill Freeway east-west route. So if you remember the larger network diagram I provided before, this, uh, the Gore Hill Freeway link takes you through to uh, North Sydney, City of Sydney to the east, and also to Lane Cove and Macquarie Park in the west. So again, those that are wanting to come from Chatswood CBD and find it more convenient and more direct, they can use this shared path to get to this point to then head east and west. So then it's both a combination of local um, riders or residents and businesses um, people and also regional people. So here again is the signals to allow safe crossing and then the shared path would continue and here's Alto Place with the extension simplistically shown in here. And um, I think the, the loss of the parking space that was mentioned before is on this side of the road. I could be wrong, but really what we're trying to do with the blisters is utilize the existing statutory no stopping, or in some cases, there's more no stopping than that uh, with these blisters. So that's why we can keep the parking loss to a minimum. So that's the sort of treatment approach that we're using there. Keeping going further to the south, it just continues uh, on the alignment. In some cases, there's already an existing shared path and um, we haven't come to it yet, but we are actually just capitalizing on existing shared paths. Remember, you can ask questions, everybody. Um, so we've got trees located to, and we're main, maximizing the retention of existing trees as much as we can. You see they're being retained there. Again, there's another tight bus shelter here, which we have to run the shared path along the front. Across Hotham Parade, again, uh, emphasize that traffic signals, we're not changing anything other than bicycle lanterns. 
uh, then through further south between Hotham and Whiting on the actual um, widened footpath to be shared path. There are some locations, I think, in where the signals are and uh, where there are sort of tight points where we might actually have to provide uh, paving across the full width. And typically that's on these sorts of locations where there are intersections or where there are high pedestrian activity areas, which are, um, are less so here, but more so as you get further towards the south. Uh, here's a location, the light blue line indicates an existing shared path that already exists. And what we, you can see how north and south of it we're connecting up the shared path to allow a continuous route. Colotta Street and Dixon were mentioned before about the proposed uh, curb blisters that narrow the, the width of the road for bicycles and pedestrians. So ultimately pedestrians also uh, improve amenity and safety uh, should the, the design get approved and go forward. Just scanning to see whether there's any more questions. Uh, Campbell Street's a major access point with signals again. We're not uh, adjusting that, but uh, if you recall from the uh, major network diagram, in the future, there's a new development happening uh, on that corner. There'll be a new shared path that connects up with our one that we're cons currently constructing. So you'll be able to ride from Herbert Street along a shared path all the way to the highway and then use the highway to go north and south. Um, so that'll be fantastic. For those that uh, don't know, there's actually bicycle uh, on-road on mixed treatment along Broadcast Way. So when we've got our treatment uh, that finishes along um, Campbell Street here at Broadcast Way, cyclists can come along Broadcast Way and then join the highway here. So it's not a disjointed network, it's, it is a connected network. And what we're doing is gradually building up the links. So along here, now we're getting to the point where the tape is, you can see tape there. Um, there's um, a lot more people that are walking around there and the bus, bus stop, uh, oh, here it is here. It's that one there is, is a larger bus stop. Now we've had to, and I am jump in here. We're had, having to design the bus uh, stop and shelter to accommodate uh, the larger number of pedestrians. But we've got enough room to be able to accommodate that with the current um, uh, sort of footpath area. That's fair, isn't it, Liam? Yeah, and to add as well, in this area, there's some really large mature fig trees uh, that are quite uh, um, iconic to the entry to the TAFE there on that, on, that, on that side. So we're looking to move the bus stops further down, just slightly um, south. Um, to kind of move away from those trees so we can still widen the path but not impact uh, not impact the existing tree roots because um, we really want to retain those those trees. Mm. Yeah, thanks. So you, I think you'll find when we move further south that uh, I expect there to be uh, quite a lot of use of this shared path by TAFE students because it'll just be so attractive for them to ride their bike and get off at St. Leonard Station and ride along our shared path. So I think we'll find that that'll be a, a good outcome of this. And you'll see that in the main, oops, sorry about that. It, it will then continue along, uh, again, the Eastern side then joins the, the Western side, uh, sorry, Northern side through here, um, past the TAFE, past the cemetery there, and then through past, there's a new international Chinese Christian school. So you might find that uh, kids and parents might be keen to ride bikes to here. So they'll have a good safe facility from St. Leonard Station. Past uh, Gore Hill Oval. So those that want to visit the Oval can use a facility to access uh, that facility uh, going forward. Across Reserve Road. And again, Reserve Road feeds the Royal North Shore Hospital. So you might find that uh, hospital um, staff at least would use the facility, maybe even patients if they are that way inclined. And then you've got the workers that work in the St. Leonard's area and even those that want to shop. And that eventually gets you through to Herbert Street. And uh, whilst it's not shown, on Thursday, uh, we'll be talking about a draft detail design 
of a project that links uh, the Pacific Highway shared path here all the way north along Herbert and Hampton Street, again, to form part of a network. I'm not seeing any other questions here, so I'll uh, keep talking. Um, we're nearly at the end of our time. So what I'll do, I'll go back to um, the presentation. Uh, oh, share screen there, thanks. What's that one? All right, thanks, Matthew. All right, so thank you for those that asked questions and hopefully we've answered them. Um, look, there's still the opportunity for you to uh, ask questions uh, now if you wish um, or um, put in your feedback via have your say. Now, uh, let me just try, and, I'll just try and make sure we get on to the next one. Okay, so what's happening next? Um, well, we've got um, the webinar that's being taped, that'll be uploaded on have your say within uh, the 48 hours, hopefully less than that. So. Uh, you can see us again if you wish. You can let your other people know that it's available and hopefully that's helpful for them to, um, to understand the project a bit better. Uh, we've got our current community consultation period uh, going. It's already started. We really encourage you to provide feedback now. It ends on the 20th of June. Um, have your say as a keep... Uh, mentioning is the principal point where we've provided all the information uh, about the project, including this webinar, including the uh, di diagrams that I went through uh, that you can look at, download, and then provide feedback. Um, and just on that, uh, in terms of feedback, we actually have a couple of ways that you can do that. Uh, there is a survey, which is a, just a number of questions that we would strongly encourage you to fill out and uh, submit. But also if you've got particular uh, comments or issues with certain locations, uh, you can use uh, what's known as a pin on the map feature, which is on Have Your Say, to provide a comment on a specific location along the route. And if you want, you can upload a photo of a, or a diagram as part of that, just to help us better understand the issue that you've, um, you've, you have. Uh, going forward, then we assess all the feedback post 20th of June. Uh, we, so uh, I can guarantee you we'll do that and that uh, that will be an important component in, to take on board and incorporate into the detailed design. So all the feedback is strongly considered and incorporated where it's seen to be appropriate into the detailed design. The next step is then that the traffic committee uh, would be considering the draft detailed design. Um, and then after that, the traffic committee makes a recommendation to council for the project. Ultimately, it's the council that makes the decision whether the project goes forward uh, as recommended by the traffic committee uh, or changes are required or not even go ahead. So uh, we will we'll, uh, continue to uh, develop the detailed design on that sort of basis. Just before we wrap up, uh, just would, again, I've mentioned it a couple of times, we have another webinar this Thursday night about another project in the Ataman uh, St. Leonard's area, uh, linking Mobro Road in the north to Pacific Highway in the south along Hampton and Herbert Streets. Um, I would really encourage you to register via our Have Your Say again, and we'll go through a similar sort of process of presenting information and um, answering questions that might arise. So uh, that's the end of the uh, webinar. We've sort of just run out of time, I think, or on time, which is fantastic. I do appreciate uh, your um, time this evening and uh, for attending, and I hope it's been worthwhile. So good evening.